Number one way to stand in the counsel of God is being in the spirit. You have to be in the spirit to stand in the counsel of God. The counsel of God is a spiritual state. So if you're not in the spirit, you can't stand in God's counsel. Number one is being in the spirit. It qualifies you to stand in God's counsel. And to be in the spirit, I told you that the first requirement to be in the spirit is love. Love is a requirement to be in the spirit. Holiness too is a requirement to be in the spirit. Prayer is a requirement to be in the spirit. Meditation. These are things that push you in the spirit. Be being in the spirit is what puts you in God's counsel every day. We don't enter the spirit and come out. We are dead. So when a man says, can I enter the realm of the spirit? Where were you? You don't enter there. You are actually from there. You are a spirit being and you are from the realm of the spirit. That's where you are coming from. This flesh is housing you, but the flesh is not you. Your real you is the spirit that is buried inside of you. Now, some of you, you subscribe to this class and then we are taking you through these teachings, not because you are not in the spirit. We are just trying to let you rediscover your source. We are trying to help you, send you back to your source. We are tracing you back to where you are coming from. That's what we are showing you. We are not teaching you how to see in the realm of the spirit. We are actually teaching you how to be what you are called to be. That is your source. When the spirit enters the flesh, become too familiar with the flesh. It forgets where it comes from. To understand, it fails to pick signals in the realm of the spirit again. It no longer picks signals. Things are happening in his world. He do not know. Even the person no longer have control over his dream. I don't know how many people it happens to. You dream and in that dream you are dreaming. So in my office I had a dream like that. So I told myself, this is not true. This is a dream. It can be true. It is a dream. It is a dream. It is a dream. That was how I woke up. I have control over my dream. I am conscious of who I am. To understand even in a dream, I deny what I am not. And when I really wake up, it was a dream. So that is having control over your dream them. So you're a spirit being. You are from the spirit world. Do you know that you are older than the world? You came from God. The world came from nothing. You came from God. Your flesh himself came from the creation of God. If by any chance the world was not created, the earth was not created, that God have to take the dust out of the earth and form man, which means the earth has participated in the creation of man and the earth must become another God. So which means God is now a co-creator of a man because God borrowed materials from the earth and far as he borrowed material from the earth, the earth becomes one of the gods of man. So when the Bible said from dust back to dust and spirit to the creator, to the father or where he came from. The Bible is trying to show you that there were two materials that came together to create man. The earth component and then the spirit component. But the earth was created by God himself. So it is just like God taking part of what he creates to create again. So which means he's still God over man. But the dust goes back to the dust because that's where the dust came from. And the spirit goes back to the father. The reason why you have a father and a mother is because they came together to create you. One person cannot do it. Even if a woman said, I don't want a man to lie with me, that woman still need the sperms of a man to fertilize her ex so that she will be able to carry. So being in the spirit is your right. That's where you are from. It's not be a difficult thing for you to do. And love is the first requirement because because love is God. Now, God do not love. God is love. You read the Bible where the Bible said that he who do not love do not know God. For God is what? Which means God do not have love, but God is what? Love. So number one, you must be in the what? In the spirit. That's how to stand in the counsel of God. Being in the spirit. Number two, the only way to stand in the counsel of God is consistency in communication. That's consistency in prayer. Consistency in prayer puts you in the counsel of God because you are in touch with God when you are consistent. Let me tell you something. I will encourage 15 minutes prayer every day than 7 hours prayer once in a month. I repeat, I will encourage 15 minutes prayer every day than 7 hours non-stop prayer once every month. The potency of prayer, the power of prayer is not in its long duration. It's inconsistency. Praying every day is better than praying once in a month. So you see, the secret of the Islam religion. They don't spend more than five minutes in their prayer. Two minutes cry they are done. But they are consistent. They are what? Consistent. So the power of prayer is consistency, not duration. There are many people, the effectiveness of the prayer only lasts for 30 minutes. The rest of the minutes, they are doing nothing. So consistency is better. Now, 
I'm not discouraging you from long prayers because I have prayed long prayers. Your spouse inconsistency. You are here, your prayer life is dead. May it be revived now in the name of Jesus. Receiving impartation of their praying is like receiving a phone of their putting a SIM card inside. You will still not receive a call. When you receive impartation, prayer is a requirement. And consistency. Consistency in prayer unlock their gifts and it puts you in the counsel of what? God. So number one is what? Being in the spirit. Number two is what? Consistency in what? In prayers. So we have to be consistent. Myself and you, we have to. We have to. Number three is holiness. Holiness is a requirement. Holiness put us in God's counsel. There are many prophets, they are very dirty. Holiness is a requirement. Sin kills morale. How many of you discovered that sin kills your, your, it kills confidence. Sin kills your prayer life. The purpose of sin is to kill your morale, kill your prayer life, kill everything that will put you in God's counsel. Sin is very dangerous. The reason why many people say things and they don't happen is because of unholy life. If you only seek and you don't align yourself, your voice will not carry power and authority. And the reason why your voice will not carry power and authority is because of the unholiness around you. Sin takes the power, the audacity, the anointing, the, the, the confidence, the morale, it kills everything around you and makes you vulnerable to stand in the counsel of God. Holiness is a requirement. Please, when you fall, rise again. When you fall, rise again. A holy man is not a man in the absence of mistake. A holy man can have mistakes, but holy people don't stay in their mistakes. Sanctification is a process. It's a journey. A sanctified man is a man who tries to be holy every day. It's a conscious effort. You are making effort to be holy. It's not easy to be holy. The offers from the devil are normally many. Standing in the counsel of God takes a lot of energy and it's not easy to stand there. It's not so easy to stand there. When you are in the spirit, when you are consistent in prayer, when you are living a holy life, all these three, it's not easy to cultivate them. It's so difficult to cultivate them. To stand in the counsel of God, it will cost you a lot of people. It will cost you friends because your consistency in prayer and all that will cost you friends. You have to sacrifice even your love for movies. You have to sacrifice your love for football. Many things. You have to sacrifice many things. There are people here who can testify. You have to sacrifice food. You have to sacrifice sleep. You have to sacrifice friends. You have to sacrifice even family. You have to sacrifice many things. It will cost you a lot. Sacrifices to stand in the counsel of God. Look at John the Baptist who was in the wilderness to understand he was wearing animal skin. He was cut away from civilization. Prophet, it's not every news you must follow. Man of God. Sometimes you say man of God. The glory of God is at work. Ten minutes time, you see another one. You, you are updating your statues every ten minutes. Man of God. And their statues is now like, like the pictures are like, I don't have a problem. If you update many pictures at once. But 10.30, picture was posted. 10.40, another picture. 10.50, another picture. 11, another picture. 11.10. Every ten minutes you have a picture the whole day. Which means you are living in WhatsApp. How can you do that? It can happen like that. When celebrities are, when people are updating their business, that's businessmen. Your business is at the council. Where you are, you are not getting paid for that. I don't eat in WhatsApp. I know where I eat. So when they send me a message there, I reply fast. If it was business, it wouldn't take me a long period of time to reply you. I hope you know that. Businessman, you send him message, he reply instant. That's where he is from. I don't eat from WhatsApp. So I know my source. I have to stay there. I have to stay there. Standing in the counsel of God will cost you. You need to sacrifice many things. It will cost you. It will cost you family. It will cost you friends. I have lost many friends. Right now, those who are my friends are those in this church. Because all the, they, all the time, are we not here together? That's those who are my friends now. It will cost you. It will cost you a lot of luxury. Sir, sacrifice a lot of things. Some of you have to get missing from social media for a long period of time. We should not see you again.